Many terms have changed their meaning over the past few years. Diversity, racism, oppression, woman. Ten years ago, the term woman was used to describe someone who was born with a vagina, had double X chromosomes, and was as emotionally stable as Japan during a tsunami. Nowadays, being a woman is something anyone can be, just as long as you buy a wig, wear a dress, and threaten to destroy anyone's career who disagrees with you. The same thing has happened to the term far right. When I was growing up, far right meant people who were white nationalists, hated ethnic minorities, and openly supported Hitler. And they were never shy about telling you they were racist. In fact, they were proud of it. I lived in a part of South London which had a very real problem with white nationalist groups such as the BNP and the National Front. Growing up in the shadow of white supremacist groups had a profound effect on my life. My mum is from Venezuela. She wanted to call me Francisco Jaime. Francisco in English is Francis and Jaime means part of the vagina that breaks during sex. Because we lived in an area where racism was rampant, my dad insisted that my name should be Francis. And I'm so grateful to him because going to a South London state school was much easier now that I had the name of a middle class white woman. I was gender fluid before it was cool. The good thing was that my mum never really understood the whole politics thing. I remember she once got handed a leaflet for the BNP and asked them if they had one in Spanish. Nowadays, the term far right has evolved to anyone you disagree with. Donald Trump, Nigel Farage, Boris Johnson, Liz Truss, Priti Patel, Suella Braverman. I doubt Hitler would approve of Suella Braverman, a brown woman who married a Jewish man, therefore producing brown Jewish kids. And for those nerds going, ah, Francis, Jewishness is passed down through the mother's side, therefore they're not Jews. I'm no World War II historian, but I doubt Hitler would have said, you know what, Henry, you've got a the point. They're not proper Jews, let them go. And it's not just people. The Guardian have come out and said things like, exercise is far right. Now, I've had a few PE teachers in my time who've shown some fascistic tendencies. One PE teacher once demanded I do 10 press-ups in 60 seconds. 10 press-ups. Only the SS would demand someone do 10 press-ups in 60 seconds. This is the sort of body fascism that Goebbels would have approved of. Although the Nazis were national socialists. And I don't think I've ever seen a socialist who can do more than five press-ups. The Guardian also claimed the countryside is racist. And of course it is. You don't see many black sheep there, do you? But there's an important point to all this. Because if everything is far right, then nothing is. Which is a very real problem because the far right still exists and they are of course still a danger. So when newspapers like The Guardian tell me the far right are on the rise in Germany, as someone who bears more than a passing resemblance to a Jewish man who happens to be halfway through a transition, I start to get a little nervous. If they're going to start taking away the Jews, I'm going to be in the back of the van because no one believes that my mum is Venezuelan. And even if they do, I doubt those are the type of genetics they want hanging about the place. Plus, it's not as if the Germans don't have a history of this stuff. Every time I see a German and I hear them talk about nationalism, I always see them doing this. No, don't tell you must put a hand down. You must put it down, even though it feels so right and beautiful and natural and the power of the fatherland is behind you, put it down. And now I'm seeing a whole host of far right parties become ever more popular across Europe. And I'm getting concerned because a lot of those boys embraced fascism back in the 30s a little too quickly for my liking. Take the French, whose resistance to the Nazis melted faster than one of their cheeses at room temperature. Never, ever trust a Frenchman. Only joking. I don't trust anyone that speaks French, and that includes the Belgians. Flemish isn't a language. It's basically angry gargling. All of these parties are talking about limiting immigration, prioritizing their citizens, and have anti-Islam policies. Marine Le Pen has spoken openly about banning women from wearing the hijab which she says is a symbol of a totalitarian ideology. I don't agree with banning the hijab. I think adults should be allowed to wear what they want. Telling people what they can and can't wear strikes me as authoritarian. But I also believe that immigration is currently unsustainable and needs to be brought down. In some polls, 40% of French people have said that they agree with her on certain policies. Does that mean 40% of France is far right? Or does it simply mean that they've had enough of mainstream political parties who they feel have abandoned them? many of her economic policies would be classified as left-wing. 
a whole host of these parties are sweeping to power across Europe, or at the very least becoming serious contenders. And I'm torn, because I think it's great that new political entities are challenging the status quo, which has become stale and lacking in ideas. But I also don't want people to be told what to wear. And since no one can agree with what far right actually means, what happens when we get someone rise to prominence who actually is far right? What do we do then? We do the only thing we can do. Go on social media and moan about it. The only problem is New York Times articles talking about why separating black sheep and white sheep is modern day fascism will be far more popular. Because writing about nonsense will always engage people far more than telling the truth. Which is why my next monologue will be about why naturists and the SS are one and the same thing. Six million views. Stay tuned. Before you go, let me tell you about a powerful new longevity supplement that has got a lot of people excited, including the FDA, who are trying to get a key ingredient in this stuff reclassified. If you watched our recent interview with Tim Urban, you might remember he said, We should be talking about longevity and longevity science. Researchers like the biologist David Sinclair have recently made some incredible discoveries on how to mitigate or even slow down aging altogether. And that's why I'm using Verso. I'm actually 64 years old. Verso is a company that translates these incredible scientific breakthroughs into products that hold the potential to increase your longevity. And one of their products I take every day is called Cell Being. Cell Being helps combat aging by increasing something called NAD plus in your body. NAD is arguably the most important molecule in your body. High NAD levels improve your metabolism, repairs damaged DNA, and increases energy production in your brain, immune system, and muscles. But as you grow old, your body's NAD levels go down, and you can't take NAD as a supplement because it's too big for your cells to absorb. That's why Verso Cell Being contains NMN, resveratrol, and TMG. These three molecules work together to increase NAD plus levels. Look up NMN and FDA. You'll find some interesting reading about why they want to reclassify it. If you want to read more about all of the research, then check out the reference links in the description of this video. Plus, Verso publishes third-party testing on every batch of its products to guarantee that you're getting exactly what you're paying for. So if you want to join us, you can get 15% off your first order by going to ver.so. That's ver.so and use code TRIGGER to save 15% off your first order. If you like this monologue, then you're going to love Comedian Exposes Woke Hypocrites. Click here.